Okay, so that's how you would create. If you were doing this on your own, that would be step one, is basically create your SD card and get it ready to go. So you guys all have those. So step two is let's get everything plugged in. So we don't have Legos here tonight, and thus we have no fancy case for your Raspberry Pi. There's nothing wrong with that, but it does mean you need to take a few precautions. The bottom of your Raspberry Pi has a lot of metal, so does the top. These are all live electrical connections. Now, we're working with really low voltage, so it's not like you're going to shock and damage yourself, but you might shock and damage the Raspberry Pi. Um, so you want to be kind of careful with how you handle this when it's plugged in, where you set it. Don't go setting it on top of like a metal table or something that's going to short all of the connections on the back while it's powered. Uh, if you're working on top of carpet like you are tonight, you want to be a little bit sensitive to static discharge. So this is a lot less of a problem than it used to be, but um, you know, if you've rubbed your feet around, you're wearing wool socks and a sweater, and you go to pick up a pie that's plugged into power, and you zap it like with a static shock, you might very well destroy something on the board. So it's always a good idea to touch a piece of metal that's grounded. So that would be like the back of these computer cases. The painted part doesn't really work because it's coded to be non-conductive, but Back of computer cases, uh, most lamps and stuff like that are grounded for safety reasons. Basically, anything you can touch that'll make sure it basically grounds your body for a second, make sure you don't have any static charge on your body itself before you go to handle one of these boards. It's less of an issue if the board isn't plugged in, but definitely when the board's plugged in, you want to be careful with that. Um, beyond that, the thing you want to plug into the board last is the power. So we want to get everything hooked up before we actually power these boards. So tonight, to power the boards, we're going to be using these machines as the world's most expensive USB power supplies. Uh, so they're all turned on, but it's merely so you can use the USB ports on the front. Um, you could also, so like when I run my Raspberry Pi at home, I mean, you can get online and for 10 bucks, you probably have these already. It's like a cell phone charger, right? It has USB ports on it, wall jack on the other. It just provides USB power. Um, so if you were doing this a lot, you would use something like this. If you're doing this on the cheap, plug it into your laptop, plug it into a computer, something like that. The few caveats with the way these things are powered is there's a limit on how much power a USB port can provide. A standard USB port in a computer will only provide about half an amp. Uh, these computers, I think, will do a little bit more. Ideally, the Raspberry Pi wants about three quarters of an amp, so a little bit more than that. When you buy a charger like this, it's designed to do a lot more than that because when you're your cell phone's pretty power hungry. So, like this will do up to this will do up to an amp per port, and it has two ports on it. So. Sometimes if you run into weird issues with the Raspberry Pi, you're trying to use like a laser mouse like you have here and the laser's not lighting up, or you try to connect to the wireless and you're not getting a connection, it's because you're actually underpowering your Raspberry Pi and you're using a power supply that can't actually give it all the energy it needs. Um, so the things that can, uh, that's, this is extra true if you're using something like an external hard drive, a big USB powered hard drive, that like if you're using a hard drive that plugs in by itself, you're fine, but if you're using a hard drive that just plugs into USB that doesn't have a separate power supply, the Raspberry Pi does not have enough power to drive it directly. So what you need to do is, if you're using high-powered USB peripherals like that, is you need to use a little USB hub that has a power jack on it. So this USB plug hug, hub, I would plug into the Raspberry Pi. I don't have it with me, but it has another little wall wart power adapter that plugs in here. I plug it into my power strip. And then this itself can power those devices. I'm not trying to pull that power directly off the Raspberry Pi. So if you're using, I mean, mechanical spinning hard drives are the ones that really fall into this category. If you're using some high-powered wireless adapters, you might run into this issue as well. It's kind of, your mileage may vary depending upon the device, but if you're using a lot of USB devices or you're using high-power USB devices, you want to use a hub in between and you want to plug the hub in itself to kind of give power directly to those devices instead of trying to pull it through the line. So, you'll see a lot of talk about this kind of stuff online, but Weird issues almost always mean you're underpowering the Raspberry Pi. So you're either drawing too much or you're not giving it enough or a combination of both. Uh, and like I said, the ways around that are higher quality power supply for the Pi itself or putting an additional USB hub and power supply between you and whatever you're trying to plug in. So with the power things out of the way, that'll actually be the last thing we plug in. Um, you're gonna have a series of things you, go ahead, you can go ahead and plug in right now. The first probably is you wanna connect to your monitor all of you have HDMI to DVI cables in your bag. If you kind of gently rotate these monitors around, and we'll see if this one's not going to want to do it. Um, but these monitors have, this one's still plugged in, they have a white port on the bottom of them. That's what the big side of this plugs into. The small side then plugs into your Raspberry Pi itself. Um, so 
Yeah, and if you're on that machine, you're going to need to still unplug them. I unplugged them from most of the machines, so it should just be an empty port. If something's still plugged in, go ahead and gently unplug it. That's just the year. Is that white? And you can also get up, walk around to the back if you don't want to just put angle with your monitor, right? It's easier to work on it from the other side. Don't feel compelled to screw it down. You're going to be unplugging it in about an hour. Um, but there are screw ports on there if you want a more permanent connection. They're not required. Uh, they'll give you more power. Okay. So would that give you enough for the entire thing to be happy? So it'll definitely be enough for the Raspberry Pi to be happy. It still won't. So there's just, even the Raspberry Pi itself is happy. There's a limit on how much power the Raspberry Pi will output again. So if you still were using a big hard drive, you, there's no way to run it. You have to use like USB thing in between. But yeah, for the Raspberry Pi itself, it would definitely be happy with that. Okay. Um, but yeah, you just, even if you're giving all the power in the world, there's a limit on how much it'll put back out. And that's what causes problems with it. So yeah, the next step will be the keyboard and mouse. Your guys' keyboard and mouses are actually all plugged into the side of your monitors, and there is then one USB cable coming out of the monitor. So that was probably sitting on your keyboard when you sat down, but yeah, if you have a USB, there should be a, if you plug in your, yeah, that's the one you want. Um, so if you have, well, you should just be one USB cable for both the keyboard and mouse coming out of the back of your monitor. Uh, go ahead and plug that into your Raspberry Pi next. One's your monitor, and one's the single USB cable that's hooked up to your monitor that's actually both your keyboard and mouse combined. So you should still have one spare USB port, and that spare USB port, go ahead and plug your USB adapter into. Or not your USB, your Wi-Fi adapter. So your Wi-Fi adapter is this little tiny thing that looks like you're going to break it. Um, go ahead and plug that into whatever your one spare USB port on the Raspberry Pi itself. Uh, so if you want to connect oh, wait, not via Wi-Fi, you're going to need to use the network cable currently plugged into the actual uh, And that may require, there's network cables that have a ton of slack on them, so you may have to situate your Raspberry Pi to accommodate it. Anyone hopelessly lost in need of some help? Uh, and then the final thing will be to go ahead and put your SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Well, the final thing before power, so it should be pretty self-evident. Flip it over, plug it in. Dave's way ahead of everyone. Can you get in? We'll go through this and change the information. I'm going to plug it in. Great. Flash it in. Just a so, you just need there's one that comes out of it. So, plug that one in and keep both of these. All right. So, that's a hub that goes to the power. <laughs> All right, so plug in your SD card. So when the SD card's plugged in, you should now have everything plugged in except the power. So SD card in the bottom, HDMI in the side, Wi-Fi adapter, and keyboard and mouse in the USB. People good? So your final step then is to actually plug in the power. Uh, 
Find a machine that's turned on. You have a, can I borrow this real quick? So you have a USB cable. The small side goes into the micro USB adapter on your Raspberry Pi. The big side goes into a power source, which in this case is going to be one of these computers. 